In this video, we're going to look at branching in RISC V, in specific conditional branching. So what is branching? Well, branching is a fundamental concept in computer science and it refers to the ability of a program to alter its execution flow based on certain conditions. In other words, branching allows a program to make decisions and take different actions depending on the situation at hand. In RISC V, branching is implemented using branch instructions. There are several different types of branch instructions, including unconditional branches, conditional branches, and indirect branches. This video is focused on conditional branching. So as you can see right here, I have labeled the six main branching instructions. Now this video is only going to focus on the first four. Just know that these last two, branch less than unsigned and branch greater equal to unsigned, to start let's describe what each of these represent. The first one means branch if the registers are equal to each other. So for example if T0 is equal to T1 jump. Our next one branch not equal This is going to say if T0 is not equal to T1, jump if this condition is true. It'll jump to the specific location that we have specified. Branch less than. If T0 is less than T1, jump to the specific location that we specify. And then finally, branch greater or equal to. So if T0 is greater than or equal to T1, jump to the specific place. So just for example, to show you what this might look like, if say we had if, and this is our risk five statement, where we can say something like branch equal T zero, T one, and then just some location name. And this can be anything, it can be exit, and risk 5 doesn't specify whether it's capital or lowercase so this can be any type of letters it could be exit like this or exit lowercase or a combination I'm not sure why you would do this but you never know now you might be wondering well what if we want to do something like branch less than or equal to or just branch greater than and those are valid concerns. However, RISC does not include all possible branching instructions for a reason. This is because the designers of RISC V made a conscious decision to only include the most commonly used and essential branching instructions and to leave out less commonly used or specialized instructions. The reason behind this decision is that by including only the most commonly used instructions, the RISC V instruction set can be smaller and more efficient. This means that the processor can use the RISC-V instruction set, can be smaller and faster, which can be beneficial in a lot of applications. Additionally, by leaving out less commonly used branching instructions, the RISC-V instruction set is easier to learn and to use. This can help make the architecture more accessible to a wider range of programmers and developers. In general terms, the creators of RISC-V didn't include other instructions because they wanted to keep the instruction set as small as possible. With just these that were given here, we can accomplish any condition with what is provided. For example, I'm just going to make some space. Let's say we have the following high level C code where x is less than y. And we can say that t0 is equal to x and t1 is equal to y. 
Now if we wanted to convert this following code into RISC-V, it wouldn't be difficult at all. We could simply say if our condition instruction, which is going to be less than, branch less than, x are t0 and y t1. So this is saying branch less than, so if t0 is less than t1, if x is less than y, branch, and we'll just say exit. and it would jump here to this instruction. Now what if we wanted to say something along the lines of using C if we wanted to say X is less than or equal to Y well we don't have a less than or equals to all we have is less than and greater or equal to we wouldn't use equals to or not equals to for this this can be accomplished and maybe you can already see it but what if we said branch greater or equal to if y is greater than or equal to x and so if you just swap these two values around it it would work so we again just keeping the idea that x is t0 and y is t1 we can say if branch greater or equal to t1, t0, exit. So what this is going to do is going to say we're going to have a condition to check greater than equal to. Is t1 greater than? So this would look something like this. If y is greater than or equal to x, you can see how we just swap these values and we were able to use this. It's just This whole thing is just kind of flipped around but this would work and you can use these use this technique to accomplish all types of conditions within risk 5 now another concept that is easy to get tripped up on and happens all the time is converting high level C code into risk 5 and in specific with conditions generally in risk 5 we're going to use the opposite condition now why do we do this this is because when we're converting high-level code like C to RISC-V, it is common to use the opposite statement in the condition to exit the condition instead of enter the condition. This is because RISC-V instruction set uses a branch and link instruction for conditional branching, which causes the program to jump to a specific location and also save the return address. In contrast, languages like C, they use a branch if zero. So in a language like C, if this is tr if this is a true statement, it will enter the condition. Whereas in Risk Five, we're using a branch and link. If this condition is met, go to this location. If it's not met, just fall through. And this idea of it falling through is the same thing as it being true. The condition being true, and you can execute the code beneath and just simply call a jump back to your instruction. So let's walk through an example. Let's say we have the code if x is less than y we'll just say i plus plus otherwise we'll do the opposite so in risk 5 let's keep our register values the same and we'll say t0 is equal to x t1 is equal to y and t2 is equal to i it holds the value of i so in risk 5 this is gonna look something like if now, in risk 5 remember, we want to do the opposite instruction, or we want to check the opposite instruction, because if this is not true, we want to jump to the else. Now, if it is true, we just want it to fall through. So this would look something like branch, greater, equal. Remember, we're just flipping these around. What is the opposite of this? This is saying 
the opposite of this would be when x is greater than or equal to y. Greater than or equal to, perfect. So we'll say t0 when x is greater than or equal to y, which is t1. So if this condition is false, we want to say, all right, we need you to go to else. Jump to else. However, if this turns out to be not true and x is less than y, we're just going to fall through. So we can say add immediate. We're going to store it in t2. We're going to take t2 and just add 1 to it because t2 holds our i. So this saying, whatever's in i, add 1 to it. And then store that value into the register t2, which has i. And then we don't want to execute, so we can just say jump and we will jump to the exit. If we didn't call anything right here, it would just continue to fall through. So now we'll write our else condition. Else would only trigger if this was a false statement, a true statement in the risk, and a false statement in the C code. And we will just say add immediate and it'll be we'll store it in t2 we'll take t2 which is i and we will just add negative 1 to it and we can just say exit right here because if this falls through here that's perfectly fine because we don't have any more instructions to execute so walking through this it starts off if branch greater than or equal to and remember we're doing that because we want to check the opposite condition because if this is false we want to go to else so if it's false we want to jump to else now if this is true or in risk if this is false we just want to fall through and that's exactly what it'll do it'll just fall through we'll execute this condition and then we'll say before we fall through again to else, we want to say, all right, we're going to jump somewhere. Where are we going to jump? We're going to jump to the exit. And we skip this entire block, and we just exit the program. Perfect. I hope this video was helpful and you found some value in it. Consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, as always, thank you.